Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> Lieutenant. Yeah? Here's Mr. Bomash. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Bomash? Still a little nervous, Lieutenant. Why, sure you are. Uh, and we can sit right here. This isn't exactly the kind of day I want to remember. Need me, Lieutenant? Uh, no, thanks. I'll see you then. Goodbye, Mr. Bomash. Oh, uh, goodbye, Sergeant. I wish you had been at my place this afternoon when it happened. Uh, so do I. Uh, Mr. Bomash, we picked up a couple of men in the neighborhood that you might recognize. Now, uh, just take your time and look them over. I do my best, but you, you know how it was. Yes, sure. Room. May I have your attention, please? Isn't that the officer Thank that was you, with you? Grant. Yeah, yeah, Sergeant Grant. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of their name in charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back in their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, come on. All the way over to the end of the stage. That's it. Keep it moving all the way. All right, turn now. Face front. Hands to your sides and look straight ahead. All right, number one, Joseph Schmidt's robbery. Tell us where you live, Joseph. Dallas, Texas. Louder. I mean here in town. Speak up so the folks can hear you. How about it, Mr. Bowman? No, he is too tall. You in a car? No. Were you carrying a gun when you were arrested? Yeah. Well, tell us the make and caliber. Smith and Wesson, 38 revolver. You guys got it. A 38 Smith and Wesson. Now, that's Something the kind of gun you described, Mr. Bowman. Something Bonner. else? Yeah, I know, Something but that isn't him. Red, I guess. Pinky. How about Orchid? Anyone ever call you Orchid? I'd punch him if they did. Okay, number two, Saul Green, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, Saul? I live at 318 North Columbine, apartment 10. How long have you lived there? Four hours, Sergeant. Well, it's a pretty nice place, Saul. Didn't you like it? I liked it a lot better than that cell block I've been in for seven years. When were you released? Yesterday afternoon. That's tough, Saul, but you know how the state feels about auto theft? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, number three, Kenneth Pritchard, armed robbery. Where do you live, Kenneth? Low 63 Curtis Street. How, about How that long one? you been in the city? No, that Three isn't months. him either. Yeah, last November. Were you arrested with anybody, Kenneth? No. What do your friends call you? What? What do people call you? Kenny. Anything else? You mean, do they call me Orchid? No. They want you pretty bad in Spokane. They can come and get me, can't they? When we finish with you, yes. Where'd you get the gun? The pawn shop. Lieutenant. Here in town. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Didn't you say these same Answer men had yes held up no. another loan yes. office? Yeah, the day before right, yesterday. Four, Why John is it the Green other man who has so robbed isn't here tonight? Where do you live, John? He was killed, Mr. Bonner. I want all of you to pay attention. Hi, man. Oh, morning, Ben. I'm just going upstairs. I had to be in court pretty soon. Oh, that brushery case you told me about, huh? Well, Bomish didn't do us any good last night, huh? Nothing. Those guys sure know what they're doing. Turn around and face the wall before anybody gets a peek. Hmm. Two medium-sized guys in dark suits. Ha! Ah, that's something to go on. Hmm. Well, one of them's called Orkin. 
They've robbed two loan offices and killed one man. We've got to stop them, Matt. Twelve hundred and eighty bucks in four days. <laughs> hey, you want one? No, no, thanks. Woo-hoo, boy. <laughs> if I weren't a married man... Oh, you always say that, Matt. Oh, good morning, Lieutenant. Hi, Mary. <laughs> I mean it, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> this is a list of every small loan office in the city. These two birds seem to like that kind of pickings best, so... Let's lay it out and have the cars keep an eye on them. Okay. Anything else? Nothing till I finished at court. Got time for coffee? No, thanks. I want to go down the hall for a minute. Okay. What time? Oh, noon. District 47. All right, I'll pick you up there. Fine, then. Hey, that new suit? Yeah. You like it? Yeah, sure good looking. I'll see you, Ben. Hey, Mary. Mary, wait a minute. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Wait a minute, honey. What's new, Ben? Hi, Ted. I wonder if you... Oh, hold it, Ben, hold it. All right. Uh, Just fill this out right here, last name first. Oh, well, it's pencil, all right? You better use this pen. I'm sorry, what was it, Ben? Uh, Turn up anything in the Monica files for me? That was Orchid, wasn't it? Yeah. Hold on. Frank worked on it last night. Sure. Uh, It was Guthrie, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, auto theft. Ed Nixon, isn't it? Yeah, Bill Nixon, sir. Well, it's lieutenant now. Oh, well, congratulations. Thanks. When'd you get out, Bill? Uh, two weeks ago. Just came in to register like the law says all of us felons got to do. Oh, you getting along all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing okay. Got a job? Oh, I'm looking around three years away, and the guy's got to look around a little bit, you know. <laughs> he can kind of get used to things again, you know. About four possibilities, Ben. Here they are. Frank pulled a 510 on all of them for you. Mm. Oh, that's good. I'll take them upstairs later. Look, uh, I'd like a make and want on these ten guys here. The loan office jobs? Yeah. I'd just like to check and see what they're up to these days. Is this afternoon okay? Yeah, that's fine. I have to be in Judge Barr's court right away. Okay, Ben, I'll get someone right on it. Thanks. <laughs> How's Grib these days? Oh, he's good. Oh, well, say hello for me when you see him. Sure, I'll do that. Well... Keep your nose clean, Bill. Sure, you and Greb taught me how to do that, <laughs> Lieutenant. The court directs that fact to be entered in the records of the court and declares bail hereby forfeited. Mr. Halls? Your Honor. If Mr. Bruchery appears at any time within 90 days in this court and can satisfactorily excuse his neglect to appear today, the court may vacate the order of forfeiture. I understand. However, the payment of any expense which may have been necessitated by reason of the failure of the accused to appear will be liable with him. If such forfeiture is not vacated within this 90-day period, Summary judgment for the amount of the bond is entered against the sureties and enforced in the same manner as a civil judgment. Ben. Your Honor, my yep. client presented Finished a property yet. bond. Finished here yet. Brochery, Jim Bail. Haven't been called yet. Bond. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Hawes. Uh, Lieutenant. Hey, yes, Your Honor. I don't see any reason for you to remain here, do you, Mr. Hawes? No, Your Honor. Sorry to have tied you up this long. You can go. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hawes. Yes, sir. Uh, in regard to that uh, property bond, I see no reason why... Hot shot came through five minutes ago. A loan company in Bellwood got picked off. Same pair? Sounds like them. There was some shooting again. Oh? The office manager killed one of them. Wine's already here. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Matt. Hi. Over here. Happened about 12.45. The guy who owns the company was out getting a haircut, and the office manager was in the place alone. Rest out to lunch. Hey, mm-hmm. officer. Officer, get these people back off the sidewalk and about their business. Huh? The whole street's clogging up. Come Hi, on. Lieutenant. Oh, hello, Doc. Hi, Doc. Matt, how are you? Smoke? Yeah, thanks. It's a pretty good shot. Shattered his spine, lodged in his heart. Office manager learned to shoot in the army. Uh-huh. Anything on him? Bill Fold says John McCall, 218 West 7th, this city. Crager and Murphy went over. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. He's all yours, Doc. Thanks, Ben. All right, Sam, come on. Let's go. 
This is Mr. Dodge, the office manager. Lieutenant Guthrie, Sergeant Greb. Hello. Hello, Mr. Dodge. All right. I never shot a man, not even in the war. Some water around here. I'll get it. Is this the gun? Yes. Have a permit for it? Well, somewhere as I do, yes. Mm. Where'd you get it, Mr. Dodge? Is somebody calling my wife? Well, I, I picked the gun up in Italy when I was there. You have a couch or something in here? Uh-huh. In the back there. You want to lie down? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, get his other arm, man. Yeah, sure. Well, I never shot anyone. I suppose I should have called you people right away. Well, how's that, Mr. Don? Well, I saw them both out in front before Mr. Rutherford went out. Something just told me they were stick-up men. So that's why I looked around the office. <coughs> For the gun. Here you are, Mr. Dodge. Oh. Well, thank you, Sergeant. <clears throat> thank you. Then you got a good look at the other man? Well, not too good a look, really. He made me turn facing the wall as soon as he came in. He was a dark, medium-sized fellow, wore a dark suit. I, mm-hmm. I did what they told me while they went through the safe, but as soon as I heard them leave, I got my gun and I ran out on the street. They fire back at you? Yeah, well, one of them did, but I, I hit the one, and he screamed, and he ran a while, and then he fell. Oh, it was terrible. The other one didn't even look back. He just kept running down the alley. I, I saw him jump in a car, but I didn't get the license. Told me it was a dark sedan, Chevy, year or two old. I put it on the wire. Five cars are working the area. It was pretty awful. That man screaming like that, even if he was a thief, I just... Yeah. Well, you relax, Mr. Dodge. Did somebody call my wife? She's on the way. Find a gun on McCall? Yeah, 32. Hmm. And the guy with a 38 still running around loose? Yeah. Edmund O'Brien, one of Hollywood's most popular stars, comes from the screen to your radio each Saturday night, appearing in the title role of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Join Edmund O'Brien as America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator relates his experiences in the CBS radio account of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Thanks, man. Boy, I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Yeah, me too. Here it is, Ben. The whole work's on my call. Oh, good. I'll ring the bell if you want. Okay. Here, Matt. You take some. Yeah. Be careful. I got it. I got it. Uh, let's see. I never used an alias. Oh, yeah, yeah. One. Johnston McCall. Well, that's original. <laughs> three arrests, three convictions. He wasn't very good. Hey, watch out for your cigarette. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, not much here. Just released six months ago. Uh, give me some of the... Here. Uh, yeah. uh, what's today? Uh, the 18th. Hmm. He'd have been 42 years old tomorrow. Say, uh, you know any of these offhand, Matt? Frank Kerr, James Kerr. Frank uh, Mappelli? No, not our pants. They were convicted with McCall last time he was sent up. Might be working together again. Oh. Kennedy and Blake made out the last arrest sheet on McCall. 1949. Oh, those guys. What? They never finish out a report. Maybe we should get in touch with them. They'd rather talk than write. I think Kennedy's at the business office now. I'm not sure. Hey, Ben. Huh? Then they called him Orchid. Huh? 1942 arrest, nickname Orchid McCall. <laughs> Wonder why that didn't get in the Monica file. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess this is about all we can do here. Oh, hi, Quine. Thought you might be eating. 
Carga and Murphy followed through on that address in McCall's wallet. It was a rooming house. Anything? A wife. When they phoned her from the place, I told them to bring her on down. Nobody's asked her anything yet. She doesn't know what happened at the loan office. She's downstairs in 107. Juvenile department? Yeah. She's only 15 years old. Lieutenant Guthrie? Well, that's right. Uh, this is Sergeant Graham. Well, they said you wanted to talk to me. Uh, what do you want to talk to me about? Uh, about your husband, Mrs. McCall. Uh, wouldn't you be more comfortable if you sat down? Uh, am I uh, arrested? No, no. Just want to ask you some questions. Here. Here, try this. Oh, thanks. I want a cigarette. Can I have one? Cigarette? Oh. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. If uh, if you have him here, I have a right to see him and talk to him. I- I'm his wife. Uh, how long have you been his wife? Almost a month. And you can't make me testify against him. You only give testimony in a courtroom. We just want information. Well, I won't give you that either. I, I want to see him. Uh, he told me all about you, about what you police do. What did he tell you? How you're always picking on him and other people. Have you been picked up? No. Where were you married? Here in town at a justice of the peace. Oh, we had a nice wedding. Did your mother and father consent to it? Uh, no. You're supposed to be 18 in this state to get a license. Do you lie about your age? Yes. But do they put you in jail for being in love? Golly. Where's your home? 401 Firestone Street, St. Louis. And what was your maiden name? Judy Hodges. Parents' names? Mr. and Mrs. Albert Hodges. Well, let me see John here. Uh, how did you meet John McCall? At a dance. At a dance here in town someplace? At a dance hall. How long ago? Two months ago. Meet many of his friends? Some. Well? <laughs> there was a man he called Sam and another one he called Bill. Sam and Bill who? Sam Granger, and I don't know Bill's last name. Well, golly, I, I don't know him at all. What does Sam Granger look like, Mrs. McCall? Just a man, sort of tall and thin. And what about Bill? I only met him once. He came by one day last week with his girlfriend. Well, was he tall, short, thin? What? Well, I don't know. Golly, just average, about your height. Mm Mm-hmm. Did Bill drive a car? No. Sam? No, but Bill's girl did. She had a car. Uh, Last week when it was raining, Bill came by, and then they drove Johnny and I downtown to a movie in it. What kind of a car? I I think it was a Chevrolet. Black sedan? Black or dark blue, I don't know. Oh, look, uh, all I know is Uh, I want to Think, Mrs. McCall, uh, are you sure you never heard Bill's last name? It was just Bill. We got in the car, and Johnny said, this is Bill and Lena. Hmm. No last name on her either? No. Where does Bill live? Oh, how would I know? I just saw him that once when Johnny and I went to the movie. Uh, What does Lena look like? Oh, I didn't like her. She was almost 35, I think, sort of dumpy and funny looking. But uh, Bill's a pretty nice looking guy, huh? I thought he could do better than her. Hmm. Not very friendly, huh? No. Was Bill? No. Did your husband ever tell you that he'd been in prison? Of course he told me. He told me everything about himself. What did he tell you? said he'd been in prison for a while because of trouble with his draft board. He was in prison for stealing an automobile. Why, you're lying to me. Well, we have it on our records here, Mrs. McCall. We have no reason to lie to you. Tell me, has Johnny been working in any place since you've been married? No. Well, how have you been living? Oh, he had some saved up from his job. Oh, he had been working, huh? Yes. You know where? No, he's, uh... A business representative who represents people. Mm-hmm. Do you know any of the people he represents? No. Well, did he have an office here in town? He told me he closed it. You know where it was located? No. Then he really hasn't worked since you've been married. Oh, uh, no. Look, look, we're on our honeymoon. We're going to Detroit next week. Johnny doesn't like living here anymore. He, he's going to open up an office there. With Bill? Yes, he said he and Bill were in business. 
He told you Bill's a business representative, too? Yes. I'm afraid your husband's been lying to you, Mrs. McCall. He's never been engaged in any legitimate business here in town. You're the one who's lying. John McCall has a police record as a hold-up man. Been arrested several times in the last 20 years. We think he's been working with another man recently, holding up loan offices around town. Oh, no. Three days ago, Johnny and his partner killed a man in a loan office. We know it was him. He, he wouldn't do anything like that. Well, think about it, Mrs. McCall. The record, the way he's conducted himself, his friends, and the information about him we've just given you. He's lied to you from the very first. Look, I want to see him. I want to talk to him and tell him I don't believe anything you've told me. Uh, Judy. I won't talk to you anymore, not until I've seen him. He's... Johnny was trying to hold up a loan office today. He was shot to death. Matt. Yeah. Oh, Hold on to me, kid. Now, oh, come on, take it easy. Hold oh, on, kid. Hold on. Oh, no. Hold. Take it easy now. That's it. Take it easy. Fine. Yeah, Ben. Boy, are her parents yet? Yeah, they called back long distance and I talked to them. Told me she ran away about six weeks ago. They're flying here tonight. Sounded like nice people. Well, let's hope they are nice people. I guess I fell off. Yeah, I guess you did. Mm. No sense of you sticking around any longer. Why don't you go on home? Oh, Molly's night out with her folks. You want to go to a movie? Uh-uh. Oh. Oh, oh, gee, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Keep it. I'll use this one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have the stew? Yeah. That's what I had. Benny sure does something to it. He sure does. Anything from auto theft? Oh. Yeah, they, uh... I got out a supplementary on that Chevy sedan, sent this up. 7249s, 3250s, 2451s. All reported stolen in the last month. Uh, it may not be a stolen car after all, man. R and I got those addresses on Frank and James Kerr and Mapelli. Mm -hmm. Crockett's out looking for him now. And they didn't have anything on Sam Granger. Still looking. You wire the penitentiary? Yeah, won't hear anything from them until morning. Go ahead, you're the closest. Sergeant Gribb. He sure is. Hold on. Ben. Guthrie. I, I, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Oh. Huh? Yeah, all right. I'll let you know. Grantland, University Division. I picked up a drunken woman named Lena Roberts. She was all upset because a friend of hers named Bill Chambers borrowed a car and didn't bring it back. He's at the Westover Hotel. One twenty eight. There it is. Uh, take it in here, man. Try the bell. Some place. Yeah. Try it again. You want your room, fellas? Uh, Bill Chambers live here. Chambers? Just a minute. I was eating my supper. <laughs> and seen a... See, I just came on after being off more than a month. Chambers, yeah. Um, yeah, she's in uh, 228. Is Key in? What? Police. Oh. Nope. He's out. Okay. Is he in trouble? Or uh, tell you about it later. Whew. Somebody had cabbage. 
I thought you couldn't cook in these hotels. You don't have to cook it to smell it. Delicatessen across the street. Mm, must be at the end of the hall. Yeah. Come on, Chambers. Open up, it's the police. He's out the window. Come on, let's break it down. All right, just... Uh, watch it, Matt. He's used that 38 before. Now, look, you keep him busy here. I'll take the fire escape at the end of the hall. Right. Chambers? Hey, mister, what is it? Chambers, you can't get away. Come All right. Huh? Go on now, all of you. Go back to your rooms. We'll take care of this. Back to your rooms. Right now. Drop your gun, Chambers. Uh, no, you don't cover! Ben! Ben, you okay, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> He's done, Ben. Yeah. Say, this is Ed Nixon. We pulled him in. No, for... Matt. It's Bill Nixon. Huh? He was asking for you today at registration. He said to tell you hello. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Grab, Sergeant Matt Grab. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by E. Jack Newman with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Clayton Post, Parley Bear, Stacy Harris, Herb Butterfield, Sammy Hill, Bob Sweeney, and Howard McNear. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Almost three and a half million young men in our armed forces have given up a lot for you. They've given up a way of life they enjoyed so you could remain safe. Back them up by sharing in the defense effort. Invest regularly in United States defense bonds. Defense bonds do two things for you. First, they help defend the freedoms you cherish. Second, they ensure your own personal future. Start now to invest regularly in United States defense bonds. <laughs> Dan Coverly speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Thank you.